Hello everybody, in this tutorial we will talk about temporal workflow. What is it and how it can be implemented in PHP. So what is the workflow? One can think about the workflow as a business process, the high level view of the use case in your application, but without implementation details. For example, booking a ticket, ordering something in the store, or transferring money from one account to another. All of these are good candidates for being a workflow. So let's create our first temporal workflow. Here I have an empty spiral application. But before we start working with temporal, we need to install temporal bridge. This package makes integration between temporal and the framework really easy. Then I need to add this to my Roadrunner config. Let's paste it here. Also to run temporal we need a server. So create docker compose.yaml and paste this here. And don't forget to create an empty config for temporal. Run the server and it's working. And the last step is to add a bootloader. Let's paste it here, right in the end of the list. Okay, once the package is installed and temporal server is up and running, we can continue. And the workflow. In PHP, the workflow is just a plain PHP class. And in terms of temporal, we call it the workflow definition. Create a directory workflow and a class inside. Let's call it hello world workflow. Uh, we can tell temporal that exactly this class is a workflow with annotations. We mark the class with workflow interface. And add a method that returns just a string. We mark the method that our client code is going to execute with workflow method annotation. And that's it. Actually, the workflow is done. Okay, now let's execute it. We will use a console command for it. Again, create a directory command and a class inside. Let it be a temporal app command. Extend it from the framework. Add a name. A description. and method perform. To start a workflow, we need a workflow client. Inject it here in the constructor. Type hint it with workflow client interface and let's make it private. Also, don't forget to call the parent constructor. Then we need to somehow create an instance of our workflow, but it will not be just a plain instance of our hello world workflow class. Instead, we use a workflow client to create a so-called stop or a proxy object. Consider it as an entry point to our workflow. 
under the hood it wraps our workflow class and provides the ability to talk to a temporal server. Then we use workflow client to start the workflow execution. Uh, things happen asynchronously, thus we don't immediately receive the result. Instead, we receive a run object. Think of it as a state of the current workflow execution. Then in our code, we can go further or we can wait until the workflow is done. So let's wait and print the result. We call a method getResult on the run object. It blocks the current flow and we wait for the workflow to finish. Let's check. We start roadrunner, then call our command temporal up. And as expected, we receive the result. Okay, but what if we want to pass some data into the workflow? Let's say instead of hello world, we want to print hello and someone's name. Okay, we can change the workflow code and accept the argument. Then here, when we start the workflow, as the next argument, pass the value that you want to be sent into the workflow. And let's check, restart the roadrunner, and again, it works as expected. That's it. Of course, there was nothing complex here, and the point of this video was to show you the way you can create and run temporal workflow within Spiral Framework. Thanks for watching.